going. Let me just remind you, though, Luke chapter 9. Do you know since Luke chapter 9 is, is where, look on the screen, 951. As the time approached for him to be taken up to heaven, Jesus resolutely set out for Jerusalem. So where are we at today? We're all the way in chapter 19, but for 10 chapters now, Jesus' sight, his whole life, right? He came to seek and save that which was lost. He came to give his life a ransom for many. That was his whole life. But since chapter 9, his eyes were on Jerusalem. On that day where I'm going to go, I'm going to give my life for the sins of the world, right? Here we are, chapter 19. So let me just tell you on the timeline of things, we're like a week away from Jesus being crucified. Now that really is going to mess with some of your Christian calendar people here. Because you're like, uh, Scott, we're getting ready for Thanksgiving and we're getting ready for Christmas and you're preaching an Easter series. Great! No, 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 no. Uh, this is good stuff whether we're in Easter time or not because the fact that Jesus came to give his life is always a good thing to talk about. So that's where we're at though time-wise. We are in chapter 19. In fact, um, uh, if you look at verse 28, that's where the triumphal entry starts. I mean, that's like Hosanna, Hosanna, blessed is he. That's like Palm Sunday. That's how close we are to the death of Jesus in our study of the book of Luke. And so uh, we're getting towards the end. We're not there yet, but we're getting towards the end, finding truth, what uh, Luke, Luke is helping us to see. And so... Um, Okay, so, so we're there. Uh, Jesus is just a little over a week from when he's going to be crucified, give his life. He's going for the very last time uh, to celebrate Passover to Jerusalem with, with other Jews and people that are there. And then we get to verse 11, chapter 19, verse 11. In all of my notes, I have chapter 9 and not 19. Whew, glad I, I'm on top, on top of it. Okay, chapter 19 is where we're at, verse 11. While they were listening to this, he went on to tell them a parable because he was near Jerusalem and the people thought that the kingdom of God was going to appear at once. Stop. Okay, I've set up kind of where we're at. Um, now let's just remember a little more. A little more, ready? Here's the deal. Uh, blind Bartimaeus, he's behind us. That was on the road into Jerusalem, right? Or into Jericho. While he was in Jericho, he saw the weedle man, the weedle man was he, Zacchaeus, right? Zacchaeus is behind us. He's coming out of it. Jesus' plan was never, and now I shall go to Jericho to perform a few miracles and just do some overall good things. No, that was never his plan. His plan was to, he, was, he had to go through Jericho to get where? To Jerusalem. Jericho to Jerusalem was about 18 miles. You keep a good speed, you can get there in a couple hours, right? And so that's where we catch up today. And as they're getting closer to Jerusalem, put yourself in that group of people, the disciples and Jesus and the others that are following. Just put yourself in, the, in that group of people as they're walking along and say, could this be it? I don't know. Could this be it? I don't know. Could it be what? The kingdom of God. They, they, they had heard Jesus teaching. In fact, it says he went to tell them a parable because he was near Jerusalem and the people thought that the kingdom of God was going to appear at once. It was going to happen right here, right now. Now listen, I don't want to get the cart before the horse, guys, but we're getting close to Jerusalem here. This could be the big one here, right here. Now don't, uh, uh, as, as, as they're, as they're um, talking amongst themselves, if you imagine yourself, in the midst of the conversation, as they near Jerusalem, the anticipation, the excitement of, of, of uh, don't count your chickens before they hatch. But I'm telling you, we're getting close to Jerusalem. One of my favorite sayings from the greatest movie ever is, uh, don't get caught watching the paint dry. Anyone know what movie that's from? Hoosiers, the greatest mover, movie ever made. D imagine, imagine, they're like, now guys, listen, you want to be a part of the kingdom, don't you? Don't get, don't get caught watching the paint dry here. This is going to, this is going to be spectacular. And Jesus is hearing this murmuring saying, because they all think the kingdom is going to come and be set up right here, right now. When I'm not going to spend a lot of time on this, because all the way back in Luke chapter 17, all the way back in the month of August, I shared more what defined, what is the kingdom of God? What does that mean? You can go back and listen to some of those messages. But this is what I want you to get from that message. So in your notes or on the screen, the kingdom of God begins in this life as we give our lives to the lordship of Jesus Christ. And it's ultimately fulfilled upon the second coming of Jesus. What does that mean? Basically this, 
all throughout the Gospels, you read about the kingdom of God. And what that means is the moment I gave my life to Christ, the moment you gave your life to Christ and you submitted to his lordship, you're part of his kingdom. He's your Lord. You've bowed the knee in, through salvation and repentance, and you've bowed the knee to Christ. He said, you are my Lord. I'm a part of the kingdom of God. But that's not all it's about. Because there is coming a day when, when Jesus is going to come and, and the last day events are going to happen. And at the very, there's going to be the millennial reign of Christ. There's going to be a new heavens, a new earth. I've taught on this a couple months ago. Not going to spend a lot of time today on it. But I just want you to know, there's, that's the, 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 the fruition, the second coming of Jesus when he comes and sets up the new heaven, new earth. And it's going to be awesome. That's ultimately. So when we're talking about the kingdom, though, Jesus knew and he heard the, the buzz of all the, the disciples and others saying, could this be it? I mean, if there was a Christian publishing house at that time, they would be selling the books and be like, hey, top 10 reasons why the kingdom's coming right now in Jerusalem. You need to get this book today. Uh, all the Christian magazines would have it. They'd have all that stuff. And Jesus said, no, this isn't the kingdom. Okay, let me teach you a parable. Jesus said, let me share a story to help you understand this. And so let's look at this. Look at verse 12. You ready? He said... A man of noble birth went to a distant country to have himself appointed king and then to return. Now, everybody, I want you to jump over verse 13. You watching at home, get your Bibles out. Come on. I want you to jump over verse 13 and go to verse 14. But his subjects hated him. And he sent a delegation after him to say, we don't, we don't want this man to be our king. Okay, let's stop. Most of us sitting here today, if you didn't spend this, this past week studying this, diving into this, looking into commentaries and wondering what everyone else has figured out about this passage, you might not have known this, but I figured this out this week. This was historical context. There, this, was, this was actually happening, this, and this did happen. So there's this, uh, in the parable, there's a, a guy who's like, he, he's going to be king of Judea. So he's going to be, um, actually in, in literal history at this season, at this time, there was, uh, uh, in fact, let me make sure I get his name right. The historian Josephus, after the death of Herod the Great, his son Archelaus went to Rome to be c confirmed as king of Judea. That's not a parable. That's history. So Archelaus literally went to Rome to become king. That's what it would, would be like. If you were kind of in that kingship line and you're going to next in line for kingship, it wouldn't just automatically happen. You'd have to go to Rome and they'd say, Yay. <laughs> and they put their stamp on you, and then you'd go back and you'd rule. This actually happened. And so Jesus, um, why do you make a point of talking about this, Scott? It's because Jesus was one of the most amazing teachers to ever live. One of the most amazing. He used current events. It'd be like, it'd be like us today, this story, this parable, I just want you to get this, would be like us saying there was a guy that came down on an escalator. He was an amazing businessman, and he ended up being a president. Now, 20 years ago, if I would have said that, most of us would say, what? What are you talking about? Even 100 years, 150, 200 years from now, um, if America is still around, um, the, the, and, and we haven't gone up in the rapture, uh, and you say what I just said about the escalator, and I said, what? What are you talking about? Well, um, it, it's current events. So Jesus right now is using current events of something that actually happened. And it actually happened that there was a group of Jewish hierarchy Verse 14, but his subjects hated him and sent a delegation after him. So J Jesus is sharing a parable, but this really did happen. Some of the Jews went to Rome and said, we don't want this guy for the king. We don't want him to be our king. And so Jesus is taking the context of a current event. Scott, what's the thing I can learn from that? Let the Holy Spirit use you. As you're sharing the gospel as you're, as you're talking to your kids or talking to other people in discussion, let the Holy Spirit use even current events and other things that are happening to help you explain to others, this is what Jesus is like. This is what the gospel is like. Let's keep going. Verse 13, jump back to that. Verse 13. So he called 10 of the servants and gave them 10 minas. Put this money to work, he said, until I come back. Now we're not exactly sure what a mina is, but someone figured out Someone along the line figured out it's about three months' wages. So let's just figure this out. Let's say the combined, for the, the sake of numbers, for the, the combined total household, household income of your house, let's just say it's $96,000. Some of you just got a huge raise, and you're like, yes, 
Others of you are like, I can't remember when I made that little. And praise God for you. Thank you for tithing and giving to the kingdom of God. So um, all of you, thank you for tithing. But, um, so let's say you made $96,000. Okay. Well, um, three months wages, you divide that by 12. That's $8,000 a month. To multiply that by three months, it's $24,000. Let's say, okay, so there's 10. The king, the new king came up well, before he left. He said, listen. I'm going to Rome. I'm going to get stamped king. It's all going to be good. But while I'm gone, I need you guys to take this 24,000. I want you to have 24,000. I want you to have 10 different people. Now, the story goes on, and he just talks about three of those 10 people. But he gives them something and says, take this, invest this, and let this build the kingdom. All right. Now, look at verse 15. He was made king, however, and returned home. It says, however, because there, remember, there was a group of Jews who's like, we don't want him for king. Sorry, Charlie, he's your king. Then he sent for the servants to whom he had given the money in order to find out what they had gained with it. Okay, let's stop right there. All of a sudden, this nobleman returns. He returns as king. As we read on, we find that he uncovers and discovers. And so the plot kind of thickens here. So I want everyone to say out loud, dun, 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 dun. Ready? Dun, 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 dun. Very good. Very good. Because the plot thickens. What happens then? He returns. What did these 10 people do? What did they do with the minus? What did they do with the 24,000? What would have you done? What would have you done? What would have you done? Interesting, though. Before we even figure out what they've done, let me just say this. Let's make sure we've connected the dots. Let's drill down into this parable so you understand. In verse 12, Jesus speaks of a noble man of noble birth. And uh, Jesus is the King of kings and the Lord of lords. Now this guy, he had to go away. Jesus came, why? So that he could die and eventually give, give his life, rise again, and go away. And this guy, the, the king, the nobleman, he came back. Jesus is going to come back. Well, I skipped a point there. Before the nobleman left, though, what did he say? He said, here's some minas, right? Here's some money. Invest it in the kingdom. Invest it in things so that we can build the kingdom. And Jesus, something flying around there. Jesus, before he left, he, he, he said, I, I've gifted you. Jesus has gifted us with time, talent, and treasure and he's saying, use your time, use your talent, use your treasure. Seek first the kingdom of God and everything else is going to fall into place. But while I'm gone, Jesus says, while I'm gone, use all these things to help what? Build the kingdom. And then notice the king comes back and he comes to the servants and says, what have you guys done? And when Jesus, he's going to come back. And do you know, Scripture tells us very clearly in 2 Corinthians chapter 5, verse 9, he's going to ask me, Scott, handsome guy that you are, what have you done? So we make it our goal to please him, whether we're at home in the body or away from it. For we must all appear before the judgment seat of Christ, that each one may receive what is due him for the things done while in the body, whether good or bad. Stop. This doesn't have anything to do with your salvation. This, this is, you're already going to make, listen, if you put your faith in Christ and you do nothing else for the Lord, it's going to be not as fun once you get to heaven. But I, I just want to tell you, when you give your life to Christ, you are saved and you, you make it into his kingdom. But what this scripture is saying is there's going to be a day when you and I are going to stand before the Lord and we're going to be judged for what we have done. I've been given the leadership of this church. Josh, lovingly, he said that a few moments ago. 20 years, wow. And, and I'm gonna stand before God one day and, and it's gonna be like, what have I done to lead this church well and to lead this church into a deeper understanding of the Lord and the word of God and allow that to come alive? What have I done? How have I led? How have I led my, my family, my spouse, my kids? I, did I do everything I could to help point them to Jesus? And, and, and have I, how have I used the gifts and the talents and abilities? I'm going to have to stand before the Lord one day and answer to that. Not, it doesn't have to do with salvation. It has more to do with, with what's going to happen in, in eternity and what's going to happen in, in heaven, in the new heavens and the new earth, okay? But 
all I, all I want to say, and what Jesus is trying to say here is, guys, the kingdom isn't about who's going to be, am I right? And Jesus is like literally in Jerusalem going to like sit on a throne and, and here's uh, John the beloved and, and uh, at the right hand and here's uh, Peter, the apostle, Simon Peter over here and, and at my right and my left and, and you all get these cabinet positions. and blah. No, it's not an earthly kingdom. Jesus is trying to point this out to him. It's a heavenly thing. It's a, it's a, it's a spiritual thing. And he's trying to teach this to him. And in and, and, and doing this, Jesus is trying to say, listen, I'm going to leave you. I'm going to die for you. I'm going to rise again, and I'm going to go away. But while I'm gone, I want you to use what I've given you, naturally what I've given you. Naturally, some of you just naturally have natural giftings. Others, spiritually, spiritual gifts that I've given you. Are you using them for the kingdom? Because one day, we're all going to stand before God. And this isn't like, Oh, you better, you better be doing good here or else. No, it's just like, hey, what kind of celebration is there going to be here? A, a teeny, weeny, weeny, weeny celebration or a huge celebration? Because look how God has used you. Look how your humility and your, um, your humbleness has come and you brought what you had before God. And God says, I can use that. You get what I'm saying today? It, this has less to do with how gifted you are, how great you are how powerful or um, how uh, um, full of charisma you are. It has everything to do with how faithful you are. You hear me? And some of you look up and oh, I can never stand up there and talk. I can never stand up there and sing like the songbirds. I can never, I can never, I can never. Listen, serving, serving. Jesus says, I came not to be served, but to what? To serve. I've came, how are you doing at that one? We're gonna talk more about that in a little bit. Um, but the, the, the king is gonna leave. And, 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 and that's, that's what we see in, in this passage of scripture. The king's gonna leave, and then he's gonna come back. He's gonna say, how have you invested? That's where we're gonna go here in a second. But Jesus has left, and while he's gone, he's empowered us with the Holy Spirit to be about the Father's business, right? I mean, to, to do things for him, to do ministry to, for him. And uh, so how are you doing at that? What did it look like for this uh, king? Grab your notes. And when I was a kid, excuse me, not when I was a kid, when, with, with my kids, we used to have these books that we'd read to the kids. Anyone ever read these before? Little, little books. This, is, this book is Mr. Happy. And uh, uh, we used to read to my kids. We used to read to them all the time. And Megan still does someone. But, but I, I used to, I, these books, I would read them sometimes, but they were a little bit too long for me. <laughs> I was like, uh, I was like, I was always the one that, yeah, okay, yeah, I get three books, I'll read three books, and I was hoping they'd get the three shortest ones, you know. It's not that I didn't want to spend time with them, it's just my mind would just start wandering. And, but these were a little longer, so we, I didn't read them to them all the time. But here's Mr. Happy, um, here's Mr. Funny, and then one of my favorites, because I could, um, living with, with uh, a, a house full of ladies, I could really relate to this Little Miss Chatterbox. <laughs> I could really relate to that. Matt Yater, you know what I'm talking about, House Full of Girls, yeah. Um, this one even has two Ashton, and you couldn't fit the whole name on there, so A-S-H-T and then O-N on top, from Tate, and ah, oh, it must have been a birthday present. Um, little Mr. Mr. Funny, Mr. Happy, I wanted to introduce you to a couple misters today um, and from our text, and I want you to fill this in, and then we're going to be done. But the first one I want to introduce you to is Mr. Faithful, fill that in, Mr. Faithful. Verse 16. The first one came and said, Sir, your mina has earned 10 more. Well done, my good servant, his master replied. Because you have been trustworthy in a very small matter, take charge of 10 cities. Oh, there's a principle here that you could mine down into, but I'm not going to spend any time on that because I just want to keep going. But Jesus, in essence, will say, Well done. I want you to see here that everyone who is a Christian enters the kingdom of God and we're going to stand before the Lord and my desire, your desire ought to be, boy, look at everything I, I earned on earth. No, it's look at everything I've done for the kingdom of God because that's the only thing that's really going to matter. For the person who lovingly, faithfully, humbly, fruitfully invests their lives for the cause of Jesus Christ and his kingdom to come, his will to be done, that is gonna be a glorious day when we stand before the Lord. And he says, well done, my good, faithful servant. 
See, Jesus is talking about investing your life and getting a good return on your investment, a good eternal reward on your earthly life's investment. And notice something here. Jesus was just mere days from the greatest investment of all, and that was his life, right? He gave his life in just a matter of a little over a week. He gave his life, died on the cross, rose again for the forgiveness of all mankind. So the encouragement today, as we look at this Mr. Faithful, is don't waste your life, invest your life. Uh, Seek first his kingdom in all things. Are you struggling with anxiety? Well, wherever you're anxious, make sure that Jesus is first there. We learned that a couple of months ago, and I'm still using that one. You know, it's it's good when you learn something from your own preaching. Um, But I'm still using that one. I'm still like, if I start to feel anxiety, I'll tell you why you feel anxious about that thing. It's because Jesus isn't the first place there. You haven't given it to Jesus first. Your finances, put Jesus first. Your time, put Jesus. I, I don't know how in the world I'm gonna get all this stuff done. Let me just encourage you with something. Let the first thing you do is, is spend a little time with Jesus. Spend a little time in his word, spend a little time in prayer. Seek him first. Whatever it is you're anxious about, whatever you're all worked up about, put Jesus first. And when you do that, that's when you open the doors for God to begin to use you. And that's what the, the scriptures say. Put him first in, in your family, in your church, in your neighborhood. Serving him, doing things for his kingdom. This is why you're here. I don't know what my purpose is. Why am I even here? Listen, you have, as long as you have breath, you have a purpose. That's to bring glory to Jesus Christ and to serve others, to point others to him, to invest in others, to bring them to, to know the knowledge of Jesus Christ and to become who Jesus Christ has created them to be. And, and this is what we see here, the faithful, Mr. Faithful, Luke 9, 23. Then he said to them, if anyone would come after me, he must deny himself, take up his cross daily, and follow me. That's Mr. Faithful. That's Miss Faithful. It's I'm going to deny myself what I desire, what I want, and I'm going to say I'm living and spending my life for you. Now, I don't have to tell you this. You know this. But there are so many opportunities to spend your life and give your life to things outside of God's church, outside of God's kingdom. But I can tell you the greatest reward you will ever receive is when you seek him first, when you put him first, and you sell your I want to stand before God one day and say, well done, my good and faithful servant. You've done everything. Oh, you weren't perfect because I just talked to your wife. I just talked to your You weren't perfect, but listen, well done, Scott. Maybe he'll call me Scotty. I don't know. Old people tend to do that, you know? Like, the only people that call me, I said, I said last week how I don't like when people call me, hey, buddy, hey, buddy, hey, buddy, hey, buddy. It drives me nuts. But my aunts, still, my mom's, or excuse me, my dad's, my dad's uh, uh, sisters, especially, they'll still call, call me Scotty. Maybe the Lord one day when I go, hey, Scotty, good job, good job. I want to hear him say, well done, good and faithful servant. You spent yourself. You gave everything of your time, your talent, and your treasure. You gave it to me, and you, you put it in my hands, and, and, and I allowed, uh, uh, I, 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 I used you. This is awesome. The kingdom was great. My kingdom came alive because of your life on earth. I mean, just think about that. There's a lot of things we could put time into. Hobbies, nothing wrong with hobbies. Stuff, there's nothing wrong with stuff. But there is something wrong with hobbies and stuff and other things if it gets in the way of putting God first. And our ultimate goal is not stuff my uh, retirement account full. <laughs> our ultimate goal is not a bigger house, a nicer car, a newer this, a newer that. Our ultimate goal is I want to build the kingdom. I want to stand. I want to be Mr. Faithful. I want you to be Miss Faithful. <laughs> Where you stand before God one day, he says, well done, good and faithful servant. God is calling all of us to serve him as we serve others. We talk about it here like this. Serve here and serve there. Find somewhere to serve here in the local church and serve there out in the community. It could be something as organized as what I'll talk to you at the end of the message today, or it could be something very unorganized. Serving there, serving the widow who lives on your street and you know they've recently lost their husband. What if you just went down and just blessed them with some cookies? Uh, uh, what if you just went down and just, I don't know, talked to them? It could be something as simple and unorganized as that. But are you serving others? Jesus came not to be served, but to serve. 
We're here to use our gifts, our talents, our abilities for his kingdom to come, his will to be done. Oh, but it didn't stop there. There was, there was I should have changed the title of this, but so each book would have the name, but I didn't. But there's, there's Mr. Mr. Faithful, and then there's our friend Lester. In fact, uh, we, we call him Mr. Uh, Short Less, Less. Less Faithful, Mr. Less Faithful. In verse 18, look at it. The second came and said, sir, your mina has earned five more. His master answered, you take charge of five cities. Bottom line with this is the report's not as good, but still good. Reward is good, but not as good. And some of us, some of you watching online right now, thank you, by the way, for joining us. We pray God heals you. And if you didn't come to church today just because you're lazy, we pray he'll light a fire underneath you next Sunday. You'll be here with us. But if you're recovering or if you're in quarantine, whatever that looks like, I honestly, I'm so glad you worship with us today and you're here with us today. But some of us were in that Mr. Less. Your name's Lester. Um, Lester, uh, Lester Faithful. Less Faithful. Um, some of us are returning a five-fold investment. It's not a bad thing. Again, this isn't speaking to salvation, but let me just ask you, do you wanna just get in do you want to stand before God and say, man, you did pretty good. You did pretty good. Good. You did, you did good. You did. It was, it was, it was, yeah, pretty good. Or do you want to stand before God one day and say, you gave your all. You spent yourself for the cause of Christ. And that looks differently. Do you know what that looks like for some of you? I'm just toss this out there. For some of you, it means that for you to give your all, you know what you need to do? You need to answer the call into full-time ministry. I want to tell you, I, I feel this strongly in my heart that we're in a season right now where God wants to begin to call some of you and I'm making some of you nervous because you're like, is it me? But it, it, we, we, we as a church, we have a dream. What if one day we could plant more churches here in this area and in this region and whatever and, and we need some of you to be pastors and we need you to be teachers of the word of God, not just life coaches, though life coaches are fine. Um, not just uh, encourage. We need people who say, I will, I will give my life to, to, to just dive into the word of God and study it and study it and help people to understand it. I'll give my life to that. There are people sitting in this room, let me tell you, God is calling you for you to give your life completely to, to doing what this guy does and to lead a church. You don't have to be just like me. I think about that. Growing up, we had a, an amazing pastor, my wife's grandfather, and I, I, even as I felt a call in the ministry, I thought I could never be like Louis Clifton. That was his name. I can never be like Pastor Clifton. The guy, we, we'd have a church of six, 700. Seems like he shook every hand by the time people left. I, how, how in the world did he do that? I had no idea. And uh, an amazing pastor, great pastor. But you don't have to be just like me. But I'm telling you, for some of you, you need, you need to give into that call and, and receive that and respond. Others of you, it's not so much in a vocational ministry thing, but you just need to understand, you're gonna be the greatest teacher the most anointed businessman, the most anointed uh, line leader, whatever it is, wherever God's placed you, wherever God's put you, your, jo your job where you spend most of your time during the week, it's not just about getting a paycheck. It's about an opportunity to be a witness. It's about an opportunity to take the giftings and talents and abilities and time that you have and giving it away to others to help build God's kingdom while he's gone. You get this. This guy was, he was pretty faithful. Not bad. So there's Mr. Faithful. There's Mr. Lester Faithful, less faithful. I'm gonna keep saying that until I hear more of a laugh because I thought that was funny. Thank you, Courtney. I did hear you laugh. But, uh, thank you back there for that laugh. Uh, then the last one is this, fill this in, Mr. Unfaithful. Mr. Unfaithful. This guy's got the excuses. Look at it. Verse 20. Then another servant came and said, sir, here's your mina. You're going to be so proud of me. I kept it and laid it away in a piece of cloth. Verse 21. I was afraid of you because you're a hard man. You take out what you did not put in and reap what you did not sow. His master replied, I'll judge you by your own word, you wicked servant. You knew, did you, that I am a hard man taking out what I did not put in and reaping what I did not sow? Why then didn't you put my money on deposit so that when I came back, I would have collected it with interest? A couple things I want you to see on this. This guy's playing it safe. You know, one of the things that motivated him was fear. Am I right? He was afraid. 
He was afraid of his boss. He was afraid of what he might say. What if I mess up? What if I, what if I, what if I, what if I? The, the, the land of what ifs, right? What if, what if, what if, what if, what if, what if, what if? And so he, he just, what did he do? He just, he took whatever that mina was, and this is a Kleenex, but we're just gonna say it's like a handkerchief, just say. And he took that and he just put it in there. He's like, you'd be so proud of me. I just wrapped that up so nice and I've, I just put it somewhere to, for safekeeping. And it's like, you, I, to quote the, the prophet Roscoe P. Coltrane, you dipstick, <laughs> what are you thinking? I mean, my, my question to all of us is, is have, you, have you allowed fear? I mean, I know that I've got some talents and gifts, and I, I know I've got this, I, I've got some time here, that, but I, I'm just, I don't know if it'll be good enough. I don't think I'll be very good, so I'm just gonna, just gonna wrap up my gifts and just, just hide them. I, 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 I go to church sometimes. Oh, yeah, a lot of times I go to church, but, well, not, not that often. I, I mean, at least once a month I go, it's just... Oh, I, 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 well, I've been meaning to sign up to serve and to do something in the church. Or I've got this neighbor I've been thinking, man, for years I should really do something. And here and, and, but I haven't really done a whole lot. I haven't taken time to spend with them. I, I'm not really learning or growing. I mean, well, hey, I signed up for a life group. I signed up for a life group. Now, I haven't really gone that often. I, everyone that just laughed were, were our life group leaders. Um, I haven't really gone that often, but I signed up for a life group. I, my heart was in the right place. But listen, signing up for a life group isn't enough. It's going. It's being a part. It's coming together to be discipled and grow in the Lord. And, and we're, just, we're just hiding, hiding it. That's exactly what this guy did. Um, so you, you get the heart. And maybe there's even some who say it's spiritual. Well, my salvation, I don't have to go to church in order to be saved. Uh, well, I could probably theologically debate you on that. But the bigger question is, why wouldn't you want to go to church and be a part of a life-giving God's bride uh, here? And why wouldn't you want to be a part of a church? Um, because God has created you for fellowship. Acts 2.42. And they devoted themselves to the fellowship. That's why, we, that's why we're there. And so for, for some people, they even, it's, it's, almost, it's like a prideful thing almost. It's like, I'm just going to take all of my gifts. You see, you, you might think, I don't need to go to church. I don't need to be in a life group. I don't. Well, what about the other people around you? There's things in those areas and those things that you need. And there's also giftings and talents and abilities that God's given you that could be a blessing to others. You see, you might be in the midst of a discussion on the topic that we're discussing here today. And you're going to see it from one direction, and they're going to see it from their direction and be like, oh, I didn't even think about that. Well, I didn't even think about that either. That's a great point. Even right down to the way we study the Bible. So so, uh, what, I don't want to get someday, I don't want to stand before the Lord and say, Lord, thank you. I feel like one of the most gifted people in the world. You gifted me so well. Well, what did you do with it? Because that's the way God talks. Well, what did you do with it? It's like, well... I want to show you something. Oh, you're going to think, oh, this is so cool. Yeah. My grandma, she, she put this together. She like put, and it's just beautiful. This is where I put all my gifts, my talents. I just, I kept them because they were just, I wanted to keep them nice for you, Lord. It's for you, Lord. It's for you, Lord. And what's he going to say? He's going to say, I'm going to judge you by your own word, you wicked servant. You knew, did you, that I was a hard man taking off the... Why then did you at least just put it in the... Bay? Why didn't you just do something with it? Invest the, the time, the talent, the treasure somewhere, somehow. It's like you lived your whole life. It's in your notes. It's on the screen. Your whole life in a, hung, in a handkerchief. You lived your whole life. I gave you all the abilities. Listen, some of you have pastoral giftings. I'm not saying you may never, you may never be on staff at a church, but you have pastoral giftings. It is nothing for you to call on people and to love on people and check up on people. and It's just a natural thing. We need you. We need you. Plug into life group leadership. Um, plug into other areas where you can follow up and minister to people. What giftings, talents, and abilities? And you say, my time is limited. Well, where can, where can we plug you into his kingdom? Here through the local church. Where could you serve in the community so that you can be the light of Jesus out in the midst of darkness? Let's keep going and finish this up. And he said to those standing by, verse 24, take his mina away from him and give it to the one who has 10 minas. 
that's not fair. Sir, they said, he already has 10. Verse 26, he replied, I tell you that to everyone who has, has, more will be given. But as for the one who has nothing, even what he has will be taken away. The plan of God involves adventure. It even involves risk-taking. And if you aren't willing to give yourself for his kingdom, for his church, you're missing it as a believer. And my concern for you is not that you like me, though I want you to like me. But I, I am more concerned, I'm more concerned that you stand before God one day and he says, I, we want to be in that first group, right? We wanna, he says, well done, good and faithful servant. Well done. You've, you've served your face off. You have, you have served Jesus. You, you have served and, and, and you, you have given of your talents. Your, you, you have taken those and used them to build my kingdom while I was away. You didn't hide them in a handkerchief. That's, that's God's, that's, what, that's what, what Jesus is trying to say here. Because Jesus is going to go away, and while we're gone, while he's gone, our call is to, is, to, is to serve others and bring more into the kingdom. Remember, again, I just want to throw this out to you, 2 Corinthians chapter 5, for we must all appear before the judgment seat of Christ. This will happen. Now, this parable ends in verse 27 with some not so good ideas, but those enemies of mine who did not want me to be king over them, bring them here and kill them in front of me. <laughs> Whoa. This is just a parable, by the way. It's a story. It's a, and so basically, um, it's pointing to the eternity that those who choose not to uh, fall under the kingship and the lordship of Jesus Christ, there is a literal heaven and there is a literal hell. This, that's not a parable. That's gospel truth. There's a literal heaven and a literal hell, Hades, and every one of us are going to spend eternity either in one of those places. And verse 27 is saying, if you choose not to make Jesus Christ your Lord, you will spend eternity in a Christless um, hell. And that's not a place you want to go. How can I make sure that I don't go there? Well, you, you it, just give your life to Christ. Be a part of the kingdom of God. Admit the fact that you're a sinner. All of us are. Believe in Jesus Christ. Confess your sins. And here's a big word. It's a church word, but let me throw it out there. Repent. There's no forgiveness of sins if I don't repent of my sins. If you don't repent, if you don't say, Jesus, forgive me of my sins. I draw a line in the sand. I don't even want to go back there anymore. I repent of my sins. You give your life to Christ. Okay, so when can I do that? You can do that right now. Even as I finish this message over the next few minutes, you can do it right now between you and the Lord. You say, Lord, I repent of my sins. I give my life to you. But for those believers that are here today, how do we respond to this message? Worship team, would you come? And you know if he's calling for the worship team, then we're almost done, but don't leave yet. Even those of you who sneak out early, I see you. Don't leave yet. Those of you watching online, don't go over and thumb through Facebook or somewhere else yet. Because how do we respond to this? Look in your notes. Number one, I just want to toss this out to you. Which faithful servants have you benefited from? I mean, I think about myself. Scott, you're asking a lot. You know that? You're asking a lot to, to, like, to give my life and the, for the kingdom of God. Well, I remember growing up, I had people in my life who'd show up on Sunday mornings at maybe 9 o'clock and grab some coffee. By 9.30, they're teaching me in Sunday school. 10.30, they're in the worship service. By about 4, 4.30, they had choir practice at church. And then they had the 6, 6.30 service, whatever time it started. And then we didn't, after service on Sunday nights, we might even find ourselves, if you were lucky, at Dairy Queen with some other people having just fellowship, whatever. You know, I, I think about the church I grew up in. There's people I don't even know that gave of their time, their talent, and their treasure. Why? So that I could sit in there and I could be discipled. They, they gave and paid the salary for my short little youth pastor named Steve Furr. And that guy taught me how to pray. That guy taught me how to pray. That guy taught me how to touch God with my prayers. He discipled me in prayer. That's probably one of the greatest things I got from him. He taught me how to pray. Do you know how valuable that was? I, I didn't tithe one penny because I didn't have a job. I didn't give anything to that church other than I showed up. But what a benefit I gained. I told you before, I, I, um, I had a great pastor. My Louis Clifton was his name. And just a wonderful, who was your pastor as a kid? Did you grow up in church? If you grew up in church, just think about it. Who, who was your pastor? 
And how do they, my pastor even gave me his granddaughter to marry. It was amazing. It's just a wonderful thing how that worked out. But just loving, who, who, which faithful servants have you benefited from already? And let's just thank you, Lord, for that. And let's be that. Many of you, in fact, I'm just looking around right now. Many of you, you, when I say garage days of Pathway 20 years ago, you have no context for what it was like for us in the first couple of years to meet in the garage. In fact, Josh and Mandy are here. They were part of Saturday nights, setting up on Saturday nights. So we, we had the, the faithful fishers, we called them, the, the happy Holloways. Matt Holloway's family was a part of that. And come out on Saturday nights. We'd set up chairs and have to tear it down after service for two years plus. Most of you have no idea what it's like to show up Saturday night to set up for church and then hang around after church on Sunday so that you could tear it all down. I'm not saying that's bad. I'm just saying there are people that that put in some time. Why? So this church could be grounded and founded and you could have a great place to come in and sit and worship. And, And now... In God's sovereignty, you are here. You're in this church. And God's saying, now it's your time. It's fine you weren't here 20 years ago. We sure could have used you, but here's the deal. It's fine. The fact of the matter is you're here now. So how are you serving? How are you giving to his kingdom, building his kingdom? And who was that in your life previously that laid a foundation so that you could find Jesus, that you could grow in faith? Second thing. If Jesus returned today, would he be pleased with your investment of your time, your talent, your treasure that he's entrusted to your stewardship? Well done, good and faithful, good servant, Mr. and Miss Faithful, well done. Would he say, well, that's a five-fold return investment there. That's, it's good, it's good. Or will he say, man, I just, you missed it. I gave you all this opportunity to invest your time into kingdom work. When I say kingdom work, I mean like leading people to Jesus and ministries and things that are gonna lead people to, I gave you all that, those finances. I bless you with those opportunities. What'd you do with them? I gave you all of those talents. What'd you do with them? And we have some amazing people in this church who, uh, you, your willingness to serve, tied in with the anointing of the Holy Spirit, there are, um, we, we've accomplished amazing things through the power of the Holy Spirit in this church. And I thank you. This church is full of Mr. and Miss Faithfuls. But there's some of you, perhaps we're dropping down to that little less, Lester, Lester Faithfuls. <laughs> we're a little less faithful. Or maybe you're just like, eh, I just show up. Are you judging me, Scott? No, I'm not judging you. The Holy Spirit is. The Word of God is. So here's the question, what changes need to be made? Here in this local church and in this community, in the seat in front of you, would you grab this real quick? There's a piece of paper that looks just like this. Years ago, we came up with this, with this thought, I believe it was a Holy Spirit thought. What's more spiritual, that you serve in your local church or that you serve in the community? And this is what we felt, I felt the Holy Spirit drive in my heart is it's neither, it's both and. And so here, here's some opportunities to serve here. Life group leadership. We're getting ready to, to ramp it back up in January. We're gonna, we're gonna um, uh, our life groups will have another on-ramp people. To, I'm just telling you right now, we need some of you to step up. We need some of you to step up to lead some life groups. If you wanna do that, talk to Megan. Email Megan, you, right there's her email address, right there. Let her know that you'd be willing and maybe it might not be right away, but let's, let's get you in the, in the process of, of leadership and what that looks like. We, we need some faithful people to step up and to serve. Worship team, um, uh, Matt's over there, ushers, greeters. Well, can you just show up and, and say hello? And when we can get back to it, shake hands and, and greet people. And, and Can you open doors? I mean, there's some of this like, I don't really feel like that's my gift. You know, I'm all for gift assessment. And I think it's good to figure out, okay, what are my gifts? But sometimes there's just a need. You just need to step up and serve. Some of the easiest places, ushers, greeters, working at the welcome. So I'm not asking you if this is your spiritual gift. I'm just saying there's a need. Would you be willing to serve? How about the nurseries? Pathway Student Ministries, talk to Jeremy if that's a passion for you. If you don't like teenagers, don't talk to Jeremy. 
Kids Church, kids, our kids ministry, uh, we got opportunities to serve. We do it as teams. It won't just be you stuck in a room with 25 kids. We have teams that, that minister together. Our AV team, camera team. Can you do one of these numbers? Can you do that? Everyone, can you do that? You could, you could run our camera. Can you press a couple buttons down? I know it's a lot more than that now, but, but can, can you do these things? Computer team, could you, could you help run the slides? Those things? Grounds, facilities. You know, even this morning, sometimes uh, 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 we, we have people that come out and, and clean up the church. Or uh, I'm talking beyond our paid custodians. I'm talking like people do extra things to fix this or fix that. Do you have those talents, those abilities? Parking, office, but not just here. Real quick, serving there, outside of the church. Arms, adults reaching Millbury students. Could you have a 45 minutes a week to mentor a student? I've done this for over 10 years. Some of the most fruitful eventful times are sitting in a middle school library with the middle school guy and just having conversation and you never know what's going to come out of their mouths. I'm just going to tell you that right now. But it's been a great time of investing in their, do you have time for that? Middlebury uh, Boys and Girls Club. Now listen, some of these aren't necessarily, our goal is to win people to Jesus. But your goal is, it might not be the stated goal of Boys and Girls Club or or any of these others. I'm thinking about uh, um, uh, Loveway, Loveway, another organization in our community. Their stated goal might not be to, to win people to Jesus, but as you go there, you're the light of Jesus. You take the light of Jesus in there and you serve like Jesus and you let people see the love of Jesus in you, whether you even say a word or not. Food pantry, crossing education center, Reda, reason enough to act, faith mission, guidance ministries, God's kitchen, American Red Cross, the window, spa ministry. We were just there this week. You're gonna see some pictures this week online. We're, we're, gonna, we're gonna do some stuff with spa ministry. It's, a, it's like a teen challenge for women here in our community. I'm just telling you, it was, it was a little awkward when, when Matt and, and Jeremy and I said, hey, we're going to the spa. <clears throat> the spa ministries we went to this week and just seeing how the Lord is changing people's lives through that ministry. They could use volunteers. Th- these are all places I want you, I want all of us to stand before God one day and hear him say, yeah, you've spent yourself for the kingdom. Well done. And so what changes need to be made? What changes need to be, to be made? What changes do you need to make? Do I need to make? So, so because here's the good news. It's not too late. If the person next to you is still breathing, the good news is God still can get a hold of them. God can still use them. And God can use you. The question isn't how much treasure you have how much time you have, how much talent you have. The question is how faithful are you to bring those to Jesus and say, here, use me. Moses had a a stick, right? Like a staff. And God was like, I can use that. You read the Old Testament, you see how the Lord did. And and, uh, Josh and I, Josh Nice and I were talking this week about what an interesting time COVID is. It's putting it lightly. Um, But when it comes to this idea, Reprioritizing. I mean, we went through a season there where we were told to hunker down Hoosiers. I pray that doesn't happen again. But here's here's what I want you to get. Um, When we did that, everything just kind of stood still. And as you start to add more and get back, let's prioritize and make sure the things that are coming back, that we're jumping back into, are the most important things. Because maybe this would be a great time to say, you know what? I don't want to do that again. I don't want to go back there. Not to this church. <laughs> God wants you to stay here. Let me just tell you that right now. I don't think I want to go back to Pathway. I think the Lord's... No, 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 no. God is saying stay, okay? Um, but it's a great time to realign and rethink. Do you get the heart of this message? Do you get it today? Listen, if you leave here and say, that's a good message and you don't make any changes, waste of time the past 40 minutes. But how are you going to respond today? Will you step up and will you serve? This is, I understand some of you are a little bit, eh, I'm still a little leery about jumping back in whole hog, whatever. Well, here's the deal. What, what can we do to serve? Find somewhere to give. Would you stand with me as we close in prayer?